Did you think, did you think I wouldn't? Did you think I wouldn't? Not the hoodie. But did you think I wouldn't come on on a Sunday night? I think about you. I think about you when the sun goes down on Sunday. I, w I worry about you. Well, I shouldn't say worry about you. I know that gives you a complex. I wonder about you. And I hope you're fine. I know you're fine. But I just hope that you're fine. Uh, how many people knew that I would probably do this tonight? Also, let's just address the purple elephant in the room. I'm wearing the new light video sweatshirt. And I did that because A, it's still a functioning sweatshirt, always was. But B, I was uh, getting dressed to go to dinner tonight and I saw this hanging up um, in the closet and I looked at it and I went, that's, that's the sweatshirt from the video. Even I was a little starstruck by the sweatshirt. And it's my sweatshirt, which goes to show you the power of fame. Before the New Light video, this was just another sweatshirt I owned. The power of fame will turn this simple sweatshirt into a much bigger deal than it ever had any right being. Same thing happens when you watch, like when you binge watch a show First episode of the show, you're like, yep, no one in this show is hot. And then by like episode seven, you're looking up a girl's Instagram, someone from the show, and you're like, ah, ah, I must meet her. Um, I hope you do that too. I think that's a universal thing. I don't plan on meeting people, but um, I just realized that I was John Mayer when I said that. But I, that youth would think that I was John Mayer when I said that. But really, I have a very, very pedestrian kind of take on it. I go like, who's that person? I always get my heart broken when I look somebody up and I go, now that's a face. And I look them up and it takes me to their Wikipedia page and they're married. Very upsetting to me. Very upsetting. Um, and I don't know why <laughs> I'm so upset by it. Uh, because I look up to marriage. I'm happy. I'm psyched that marriage exists and that somebody's with that person. But I'm upset that it's not me. <laughs> I don't know. You know what I mean? So, the point is, you put anything on TV and watch it more than three times, it becomes famous. So I'm wearing a stupid sweatshirt that has become famous from a video. It's just so stupid. It's, it's amazing. Didn't Dana Carvey say that you could put a grapefruit on television and it would become famous and then that would just be the grapefruit from that show? Because, I mean, think about it now that I have this. Like, it's visually... Like, he's doing the character. He's doing... I don't even know that I could wear this out. I wonder if I could ever wear this out someday without looking like I was totally asking for it. All right, because I'm kind of done asking for it. Um... I also want to thank uh, my lighting director, This Steel Counter, which I realized last week is doing a lot of good work for me by way of reflecting the light overhead and giving me what I consider to be fairly good under lighting. So I've been accused in the past of being a little self-centered on my Instagram lives. So I thought that I would turn it over to you guys. What's going on? What's got you sad? Talk to me. And when I say talk to me, I mean, uh, that's, a good, that's a really good question. Do I have a crush on somebody famous right now? I do not, and it's been a long time since. Well, okay, crush means like, okay, when you're, when you're another famous person and you have a crush, it turns into actionable intent, like very quickly. So I haven't had that. And I'll tell you why in a second. But for like favoring someone, that's so much fun to watch TV and go like, she's, a, she's my favorite. Like, that's really great. Now, let me tell you how I got over having celebrity crushes. Get yourself a drink, because I'm going for it. I got over having celebrity crushes by realizing that celebrity women want nothing to do with me. And at first, I was a little upset at that. But through the years, I've found it incredibly helpful. 
I actually think it's what I needed. And I'm a much happier individual for no longer assuming that just because you were a female and you were a celebrity that I had anywhere close to a shot. I have no shots left, okay? Now, I also want you to know that I'm super, exci I'm super proud of my life. I'm proud of my life. I'm proud of the names that inhabit my history. I'm, I'm proud of my life. You should get to 40 and be as lucky as I am to be proud of your life. That said, I used up all my shots. So the fact that I know that I used up all my shots is incredibly helpful when it comes time to even begin thinking about, well, <laughs> because a voice comes right into my brain and says, there's just no way. Nobody in their right mind would care to add you to their Wikipedia. And I go, well, that's fair. And I find that just sends me right on my way into living, uh, living like a normal person. And I, I enjoy it. So I'd like to thank my former self for uh, just really cauterizing that vein. So uh, it's great. Really, um, really long answer to that question. Yes, I know. I did say I would let you talk, so go for it. First guitar gig tomorrow night. Any tips? Go slower than you think. Go slower than you think. Maybe bring a metronome because when you get into stage mentality for the first time, it's going to make you overmodulate and a second's going to feel like this. So... That's all. That's the only thing that you can control on your first go around is uh, pull. Make sure you're in the right time. Just pull it back. I mean, even I'm talking too fast on this thing, and I've been doing this for twenty years. Um, I'm not old. Stay young. Well, here's how I describe myself right now. I'm a. I'm either an old new guy or a new old guy, and so. I think I'm right in between. Like in a couple of years, I'll be an old guy. But I'm at the very end of young guy. So I'm an old young guy. I'm an old new guy. I'm about to be a new old guy. But in most things, I'm a new old guy. Okay. Haven't been inspired to write lately. Tips for writer's block? Just listen to other music. Just listen to other music. I'm not in love with my writing at the, at the current moment either. Um... Tips for anxiety and being too in your head. Well, those are two different things. I'm in my head all the time, but I, I don't have anywhere close to as much anxiety as I used to have. It's a very tricky thing, you know? I mean, Sunday night's conversation leads to anxiety. Um, get as much information as you can to learn how boring your situation is. I promise you. And this is one of those rare times where you can tell somebody they're boring and they shouldn't get upset. And in, in fact, perhaps would thank you if, if they take something from it. Your anxiety, I promise you, is boring. Boring meaning it is shared by so many other people. Anxiety feels so personal as if it is stamped and made and sent just to, for and to you. It, is, it has chosen you specifically. But it is very boring because so many... I could sit here and I won't, but if I, I could sit here... To, and I think there's a lot of people out of the 6,200 people who have anxiety. I could sit here and rattle off all the things that my anxiety is like. And I'm pretty articulate. And I'd come pretty close to your anxiety. And you'd go, I do have that. Yes! 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 And that's all you want. And pretend that I did. Yes. Yes, I do too. No, that doesn't make you crazy. No, and I even know the one you're not telling me. And I don't think that makes you crazy. I don't think you should tell people because then they ask you about it later on. And if you're over it, you don't want to live by someone else's bringing it up. But I even know about all the weird, really weird boogeyman stuff. I know. And it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Yes, we all have it. But not all of us. But if you can have anxiety, then you do have a distance to fall from feeling the way you did before it into going into your thoughts. And if you do have a distance to fall into your thoughts, then you have a certain towering presence of your thoughts. And that is a blessing and a curse. And I hope that you learn to ride the blessing and minimize.
the curse. What flavor fluoride do I get at the dentist? God, I gotta go to the dentist so bad. Every week now, I'm like, this is infrastructure week. This is where I just take care of all the things that are bugging me. I have to go to the dentist. I have to go to the dentist. And I know the news won't be great, but I just wanna get it over with. I just wanna go get the bad news, fill them up. And by the way, I brush my teeth every night, but I just know. Yeah, I just, I just know. I gotta tell you, teeth, are one of the most powerful tokens of like feeling healthy or feeling vulnerable. And right now, my teeth feel vulnerable and I feel vulnerable. You don't think I have general anxiety, but this, so, well, listen, social anxiety, it, saying you have social anxiety is like saying you get hypothermia if you go out into freezing cold. That is a condition that is environmental and that your body has a reaction to. I, I'm not sure that's a mistake. Now, I don't, I'm not a licensed practitioner of medicine, so I, I, I can't give you advice in a clinical sense. But, um, yeah, that's an environmental thing. That's like saying I, I, get, I, get, I get anxious on airplanes during turbulence. Well, that's not an anxiety problem, you know. So social anxiety... I don't think you have social anxiety if you're around your friends. I think you're referring to going to parties, going into the loud, overpopulated outside world. Yeah, that would be like going out into the cold without a jacket. And that's why um, people like to bring a jacket in the form of alcohol or whatever their slight little coloration they like to do to themselves is. That's the jacket. So you protect yourself from hypothermia. How do I stay creative and keep evolving my music? Uh, ridiculously short attention span. Ridiculously short attention span. I'm like, like, New Light is still becoming a bigger hit every week. You guys probably don't, like, I don't know if you know that it's becoming a, a, a bigger hit every week. And I'm already like, I don't know if I could do a whole record like that because I've lived with it for so long. I'm like, I'm like, ah. All right. I mean, it's crazy that New Light is still working. I love it. But I'm already thinking about like the record after this one. So, what else? Most valuable life lesson. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Too many to answer. Uh, the, uh, oh, playing New Light, it was great. And it's only gonna get better and better. Uh, and advice, oh, there's, in the music business. Um, the business side not performing, I don't have advice because I'm, I'm a, Friggin' idiot when it comes to the business side of music. I'm not a mogul. Oh, you know what's happening is that it's hard to read because there's all, I'm, I'm doing, there's so much craziness in the actual camera. Uh, when's the next single? I don't know. I'm actually being held back because New Lights, this thing came out in May and it's still going up and up and up and everybody's just, I'm just like sitting on a holding pattern. So, by the way, file under. Good problems. Favorite Stevie Ray song? Oh man. Man, the little wing from Sky is Crying is just the best guitar instrumental ever. It's the best. Next single, New Old Guy. I'm a new old guy. I'm a new old guy. Not six feet under the ground or all that high in the sky. Somewhere in between, and I'll tell you why, cause I'm a brand new old guy. Can you do another ridiculous film clip or does it lose humor value next time? Oh, for New Light? I don't know. Yeah, I wouldn't do it again. I don't have top five movies. I never um, made a top five for movies. I'm not a very big movie aficionado. I have a hard time cutting out two and a half hours from my, like, when I watch a movie, I have to stop this movie and watch someone else's movie. And unless it's a really great movie, um, I don't want to watch someone else's movie if I could just watch my movie. I'm addicted to watching my movie. Thank you, Bandana Almanac. Let's not use my Instagram Live for personal business. Okay, I'll, I'll write it back. What else is going on Sunday night, people? Someone wrote, talk about Frank Ocean. It's like, talk about Frank Ocean. 
you didn't really leave me a real specific in there to talk about Frank Ocean. You were just sort of like, go. Just open-themed essay. You can't sleep, Tony? Well, you've come to the right place. You're about to meet the Dalai Lama and you want to... This person said, about to meet the Dalai Lama, do you have a question for him? First of all, amazing that you're about to meet the Dalai Lama. And in fact, maybe part of the reason you are going to meet the Dalai Lama is because you're the type of person who would tell somebody, I'm about to go meet the Dalai Lama, care to pass a question on to him through me. I don't know if anyone in the history of the world has ever said, gonna go see the Dalai Lama, can I deliver a message for you? That is Dalai Lama material. You've passed the test. And I do have a question, but I ha it's actually a three-part question. So if you don't mind, I'm going to DM you a three-part question for the Dalai Lama. By the way, nobody who ever had a two or more part question ever had a good question. Sorry. I'm sorry. If somebody ever stood up in a question and answer and said, my question is in two parts, let me tell you the two parts. Not good. Was there ever a roadblock in motivation for creativity in my early 20s? No. No. I had, I had motivation up the wazoo. And where is the wazoo, by the way? Do both men and women have a wazoo? Do things normally go in the wazoo or out of the wazoo? Is that strange why it's up the wazoo? Are there some people who say a wazoo is exit only? And how much is that offensive? I don't, un I don't know any of the norms when it comes to a wazoo. But I know that if something's up the wazoo, there's a lot of it. <laughs> oh man. You ever meet someone who's like, ooh, God, just don't keep my wazoo clear, man. Everything's good. Do I ever get tired of playing a song? Um, yeah, but they, but they, but time heals all wounds there, and I'm psyched to play them after a wait, after a pause, so. Will I ever host a TED Talk? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. What do I think is the meaning of life? Do the best you can, given where we are in the human evolution. Do the best you can with the tools we have. Because we now as a society are aware that there's more to be had. See, we kicked disease. We, are, the generation before us, kicked, like eradicated, the last two generations eradicated real plagues, disease, you know. And while you are trying not to get a disease, I'm sure that's in some ways very zen psychologically, because all you're trying to do is not get a disease. <laughs> and have you ever come home really, really, really tired from work and you're too tired to have any existential dread and it's kind of zen? I think that's probably what it was like when you're just trying to avoid a plague. But, but see, we eradicated disease. And so it was always going to be the mission of this generation to travel inside and eradicate a much more internal sort of a monster. And so we are aware that that needs to be done. We know what our mission is. But we also know that there's a limit given this lifetime to how far we can carry that baton. And the meaning of life is to find the right balance between the mission of carrying that baton and the calling of enjoying your life. I don't mean enjoying your life like buying a car and, and making a bunch of money. I mean enjoying your life like appreciating your life by way of enjoying your life. And the meaning of life is finding the balance between changing what you can while you're here and enjoying the ride, knowing that you won't be here forever. And this is really big undertaking. This generation has said basically, we, we want to move inward and we wanna, we wanna take our lifetime to really make change in how human beings work. That is the friggin' loftiest goal 
but it's not one that I'll ever want to talk someone out of. The thing I want and I hope for people to understand is like, man, I just, just be a little happy. Just like cut out some time to raise a family and enjoy the ride for the, for the ride that we have. So that's the, that's what I think the, the meaning of life is. Yep. Can I do some EDM? Uh, New Light's probably the closest I come to EDM. Also, I mean, respect to a generation for saying, we want to audit everything. We want, we want, and, I, and my brain goes like, well, don't you want, do you want to fix one road at a time so you can pass on other roads while you're, cons and they're like, no, we're going to, we're going for a big dig. We're going, we're going to dig all the roads up. And I go, okay, but then no one's going to be able to drive anywhere because all the roads will be being fixed at the same time. And they're like, yes. And it's not my place to tell somebody what they should or shouldn't be doing. I'm a new old guy. I'm an old new guy. But I go, that is lofty. And I friggin', I 100% non-ironically wish the best and will be an ally in every way I possibly can. But you're walking to work because every road. I go, okay, okay. So all of it? And they're like, yes. And I go, all of it now. And they're like, all of it now. And I go, I'm, I'm with you. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? You know? Thank you for the compliment. I do like country music. I, I love country music. My day's been great. My day's been great. I took my car out for a ride, saw a friend in his new house, went to dinner with some friends. I, I drove around today. I must say I've become the dude who takes his car out on a Sunday and just gets happy from driving. I got happy today from driving. Listening to Bruce Springsteen. Happy birthday, Bruce Springsteen. Driving a Porsche on the 101, listening to Bruce Springsteen and realizing everything's all right. What do I think of religion? Uh, I'm gonna pass that question for now. I've done enough um, heady, uh, heady answering. Jacob Sartorius, Sartorius, what's up? I thought it said Jaco Pistorius. It's probably someone you know because people say to you, oh, that's like Jaco Pistorius. And you're like, who's that? Well, now you know who Jaco Pistorius is, I'm sure, because people probably think that Jacob Sartorius looks like Jaco Pistorius. I gotta tell you, this is a really interesting social event because I don't, I don't know much about you, but I know you're a musician and we're meeting for the first time. And, and I, I want to say hello to you, but I also want to express a little bit of ignorance as to what your music is. So maybe, I, I don't even know, I, I don't think, I think you're a minor, and I'm, I'm not even sure what my policy is on uh, going live with people. But I was going to ask you to, to sing a part of your song with it, and I realized that I don't, I don't know what the rules are. I, I, you could be nine, I don't know. I don't think you're nine, by the way, for the record. Also, are you so famous that everything I say about you is going to end up on some... Are you, is this going to be on Ocean Up because I'm, I said your name? You know, some people, when they're young, are so famous that if you say their name, it turns into content. So I would like to use this opportunity to say the name Jacob Sartorius and tell you about how nuclear fission works. Because I think you could all learn. Oh, Ocean Up isn't a thing anymore. <laughs> well, happy birthday. Thank you, Jacob. Happy birthday. Six, turning 16, are you going to get a crazy car? Are you getting a crazy car? Or are you, getting, are you being given a car to teach you a lesson? Are you getting a hand-me-down? Or are you getting uh, uh, a crazy exotic car? Tell me. I'm very interested in this. Is your, is your first car, or, or are you going to be like most people in showbiz where you won't even get your license because you're too busy? I, want, I need to know, I need to know what your first car is going to be. I'm not saying another word until you. What's up, Johnny Grease Missiles? 
Did I just say something offensive that you wrote and I don't know it because I don't know what grease missiles? So did I say the last name right? Because now you spelled it wrong. Oh man, this is like when people would say at the very beginning of my career, they would say John Meyer. And I got to say only about a couple years ago, people stopped saying John Meyer. So Jacob, you're in with the best of them, buddy. Okay, it is Sartorius. Okay. Oh, he's already hinting at a Bentley truck. But let me tell you why I relate to this. I didn't drive till I was like 19 or 20. But my, the first football game I ever went to was the Super Bowl. And I loved it. And I don't think I needed to go see a, a, a regulation game to enjoy the Super Bowl. And I don't think you need to own a Volkswagen or an Audi to enjoy the luxury, the power, and the performance of a Bentley truck. Now, I also want to say that if I was driving down the road and I saw a 16-year-old in a Bentley truck, I would change lanes as fast as I possibly could. <laughs> there you go. Listen, you start with something uh, a little more modest, and then you climb up there. That You know what? I know you're going to be all right. I know you're going to be in this business for a while because that's the right answer. My first car, I won't say the year of the car because it's it's not essential, was a 1991 Plymouth Voyager station, uh, uh, minivan with the wood paneling on the side. And that was my first car, it was my mother's car. And I drove that to gigs and I worked my way out of it. And um, now I drive a 1999 Plymouth Voyager. So I'm moving up. Thoughts on sushi? Well, I mean, isn't it just pizza for rich people? I did just say the year. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I did just say the year. I have toured with Cheryl Crow, and I love Brandy Carlisle, and I have a fantasy that we make a record together out in the woods. Favorite album to listen to right now? I have not listened to... Oh, well, Bill Evans... Bill Evans' Village Vanguard performance. You just, Sunday at the Village Vanguard, Bill Evans. That's it. All I listen to is Bill Evans outside of the gym. If I'm in the gym, like, have at me. You play anything you want for me. Uh, but when I'm in my car, it's like Bruce Springsteen and Bill Evans right now. Jacob, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to give you a DM. And I'm going to give you my email. And I would love to hear the song. I would love to hear the song. You want to hear my song? I believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Yeah, see, someone said, sing, sing something, please. Show them all the beauty they possess and shine. Isn't it sad that my voice won't even go? Show them all. I can't do that quietly. Yeah, I'll follow you. I'll give you the, I'll give you the email. Send it to me. Well, don't, you know, it's no Bentley truck, but I'll listen. I'll give it a listen for sure. Um, give them a sense of pride. That was actually not Billy Madison voice. That was sexual chocolate coming to America voice. Get your movies right. Why would you read a war in my life? The simplicity of interest. Um, because you didn't hear, you didn't hear the version before it went to mix, which had a little bit more uh, body to it. That's all. But I learned a lot that mix session. So, Jacob, when you're mixing, if you, if you ask the mix engineer to turn too many things down, then the whole thing just gets sort of, you need to turn more things up. That's how you get a better mix. And if you listen to, like, Michael Jackson Thriller, everything's up. If you listen to Thriller and pretend it was your record, you'd be like, this has to get remixed. But that's my point, is that it doesn't, and that you just gotta, oop. Come out, angel. Come out, ghost. I don't remember how the rest went. Come out. I don't know. I, that's the first time I've sung that in 10 years. No lie. Well, almost 10 years. Seven years. Do I miss Connecticut? I sort of do. I would miss... I, I don't know. Yes, I miss Connecticut. 
because I, in the way that you would miss your childhood, yeah. Come out, come out darkness. And come out, I don't remember, were there four come outs? What's the next one? Come out angels, come out ghosts, come out darkness. Uh, 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 uh. I'm in the wall of my life, in the door of my life. Oh, bring everyone you know. That's not a bad. That's not a bad lyric. You know what's really weird? Oh wow! Come out, angels! Come out, ghosts! Come out, darkness! Bring everyone. You know. That's good. I actually, it's been so many years since I wrote that that I looked at that like someone else wrote it, and I went, "That's really good." Um, Rita, Rita, I thought about you today. I thought about you today in the car because I was listening. I'm having a Bruce moment in my life. I'm having a Bruce moment. And I started thinking about fan mail. And I was fantasizing. That'd be really interesting if two dreams come true, right? It's like a, like Jacob Sartorius gets, like, a, like I listen to his song and like set him up. And then I, because, I'll tell you why, because I, I want to, I wa I'll tell you this. I want to give Bruce Springsteen a message. I, I want to write him like a fan letter, like it's a paragraph. I, I would never write a, write a long book's worth of stuff. You know how that, how that works. But I would just, man, that fucking guy, that fucking guy, he waits in the weeds for you in your life. He waits until you get there where you need him. And then when you need him, he's right there. He's right there. And I was, and look, and I said the same thing about Grateful Dead, right? It's not gonna get me, like it's not gonna hit me. And then at a certain time in your life, pow, in the face. And then I'm going through this thing in my life where I'm like, I need real, where's real, where's real? Brown, brown, he, like, a, like a laser, like a laser. And I'm just going like, now I, uh, you know, maybe my recorded output is like, it's just all about me getting my feelings hurt enough by one artist to then want to go make a record that's anything like it so I can stop my hurt feelings. <laughs> that might actually be how I make music. Um, I have not seen the show yet, but I'm going to see it uh, when I get to New York very soon. And I know it's before the end of the run. Also, I want to apologize to you because none of this had anything to do with you directly. And when someone says they're thinking about you, you get really excited for like a serotonin release and you didn't get it. And I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry. Um, but man, that's, if you tell the truth, if you tell the truth, you might not be the coolest thing in that era. But you, over time, will last and deepen in a way that no it girl, it guy, band of the year, artist that has everyone's attention will ever get to. And that's where I'm at. It's like, how do I tell this maximum level of truth in an era? This creativity is time independent. Well, ain't that right? Because... You know, if, if, if you could do a rap verse about how much money you spend in the studio, I would be, that would be my whole verse. Be how much more money I spend in the studio than anyone else. <laughs> they're like, they're $1,500 hands of blackjack. And then you walk out and you're like, I lost. And then you go home and you're like, how do I win? How do I win at this game? And you go back and sometimes you're like, oh, I pushed. And sometimes you're like, holy crap, I doubled down after a split and I won. But it's like gambling with your emotions and your money. Um, but if you listen to me, if you tell anybody out there who plays music, if you are brave enough to step to the side of the modern game and tell the truth, and I'm even telling this to myself, you will be immortal. You will be musically immortal. And the world needs so much truth right now. And I'm going to say two things. Number one, I know that I could be that person. And number two, I haven't found a way yet. Well, see, Rita, this is getting instantly deep because 
you can chase trends and it will work. It will work just enough to make chasing trends feel like the thing to do. And occasionally you need it. You need a hit. You got to get a new light for me is really important for me. Maybe if I never go make another new light, maybe new light because I wanted to make a song that was in the vocabulary, you know, but maybe that's just enough for me to go and make my Nebraska or something. I don't know, but man, there's a little, a little opening, no smaller than a womp rat. That's a star Wars reference. I don't think I have any gamer fans here or any, Oh, that's interesting. New light is truthful. It is truthful. You know what? You're right. It is truthful. You messed me up. It is. Uh, maybe just not uh, on, a, on a... Maybe not in the vein that I want to tap. Because the barometric pressure of the world is so thick and everybody is screaming. And you know, I always say like, people scream the loudest right before they cry. And I want to be, I want to write that stuff that goes like, bet you want to cry, don't you? And, and, and like, go around the whole back door and just be, Prop, bet you want to fucking cry. Bet you this shit is, bet you that you go to bed feeling lost and a little poisoned. I bet you do. You know, and, and no drums, no nothing, just wow. How do you become a trendsetter, a leader, not a follower? Oh, I don't, I think someone else tells you that. I don't think you can try. I think someone else tells you that. Can you work with John Mendes? Can, have, and will. How many hours a day do I practice? I don't really practice. I play for pleasure now. And although I did practice for dead, I practice for dead and company all the time when I'm on tour. Favorite sneaker releases lately? Uh, okay, well, you know, favorite Dylan song at the moment is Wigwam. For some reason, I rediscovered Wigwam. Na, 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 na. And uh, it was just too cool. It's, it's off of Self Portrait. Listen to, listen to Wigwam by Oh, that's cool. The greatest living guitar player. Well, man. I, you know what I told somebody, Rita, and beyond? Um, here's the best way I can put it that makes sense to my brain. That doesn't feel like it's overly modest or it's um, big-headed. If guitar playing were tennis, I'd be in the open. I'd make the open. I don't know where I would be in the open, but I'd be in the open. And maybe there'd be a picture of me on the ticket. But I don't know that I would come home with any, um, any championships. What do I think of Ariana Grande's new album? I like it. It's like a 90s R&B uh, love letter record. Right on, Nick Vile. We're all fans of your, uh, of your program and hope that your program is still something you enjoy and don't find the bane of your existence. I hope not. I shouldn't have even neuro-linguistically programmed that into your brain. Well, guys, my job here might be done. I was here to distract and also get company from you guys. It seems like maybe uh, we've made it past the wave of sadness together. Well, listen, the battery percentage is too high for me to go by that uh, metric anymore. Do I miss Mac Miller? Absolutely. I was just mentioning today to a friend uh, of the both of ours. Uh, it's under, it, it's like, it's still under your skin. It's just, it's just like a layer under your skin. Good to see you too, Rita. Um, I'll reach out to you soon. Rita has a great new song. Rita, would you like to plug your song? Would you like to uh, tell the people what the name of your song is? I thought it was great, and I reached out to you when I heard it. I thought it was a tremendously well-written song. D 
damn, you're still here. What did you go do? You went and did 30 minutes on a treadmill and came back and I was still here. Plug it, Rita. Plug it, Rita. Bigger Picture, album drops 28th. Listen to the song Bigger Picture uh, by Rita Wilson. It's fantastic. It's really, 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 really well written and makes me want to go pick up a guitar and be like, Damn it, can I, do I still have it? I don't know. I, just, I, I guess it's good for you, but Rita, maybe you're like me. You consider that every song is your last. I don't know. Yeah, it's a great, great, great song. Great song. Okay. You guys are hard to say goodbye to. Did you ever, are you the types to ever be like, um, when someone says they're gonna get off the phone, you're like, wait, and they go, what? And you go like, three more minutes. You're like, I need to wind down. So I'm, I'm giving you a three minute, we're gonna wind down together, I'm giving you a three minute wind down. Okay. Nope, three minutes. Three more minutes, wind down. Oh, I'm staying up, I'm just not gonna be on this thing. What does that say, Ganbate? No, no. It doesn't say that at all. I talk fast and furious, but then when I'm done, I don't need to talk anymore. That's, that's what people don't understand. Is they think I'm like this all the time. I like put it in hyperdrive and then I'm cool. Gambate. Gambate. I have a very good Japanese accent when I speak Japanese. And it, uh, it's not great because people think I speak a lot more Japanese than I speak. Because they're like, oh, this guy knows Japanese. And I really don't. That says my name. Oh, man. I don't have it. I don't know that process says come back to come back to Japan. I saw a little thing and then no and then that maybe the, maybe when are you gonna come back to Japan? I don't know. But when I speak Japanese in Japan, I do it uh, very convincingly, and then people answer back to me in like perfect, like fluent Japanese, and I go, ah, I'm sorry. It's really speaking Japanese is really all about notes. So everything you say is and then so. You can say like a pokkaio tomate So if you do it that way, people are like, "All right, this guy lives in Japan," and then I'm done, and then I just get flattened. Then I just get flattened. What advice do I have for beginning songwriters? Finish your songs. Let me tell you what could make every songwriter watching, myself included, a better songwriter. I'm going to give you the only tip you'll ever need. And it's not going to be what you think. Well, just... If you could bring yourself to finish a bad one, as bad as it was, to finish the song, accept that the song is bad, you will write a better one and 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 a better one in a period of five days. But because we don't want to suffer the indignity of writing one that's not good, we don't. And so we never get where we're supposed to go because we're waiting. Like, I'm a frustrated stand-up comic, right? I, as, I just believe one night I'll get up on stage and have a perfect hour. That won't happen. The people who have great hours start out with bad hours or bad five minutes, bad, I've seen the legends holding notebooks they took out of their pocket and, and they're shoddy and they're not great and they're on the way to something. My mind is highly organized. What are you talking about, Barbara? Everything I'm saying is, yeah, yeah, you gotta be able to fail. So, but we are so hell bent on not finishing anything until it's great that if we could just finish a bad one and let it be bad, you go like, so it's bad. Or maybe it's not, but even if it was, so big deal, but you remembered how to write a song and you can write another one next time and it will be better because you'll remember how to write a song. 
When you say it's been three minutes, you're passively aggressively telling me it's time to go. Barbara just told me that my mind was disorganized. Everything I've said is a weaponized level of organization. It's far too organized. All right. Um, it's also just nice to say the name Barbara when you're upset. And I'm sorry if that sounds like I'm making fun of your name, but when you add the name Barbara into a diatribe, God, does it sound more powerful. I just got to tell you something. I got to tell you. Thanks for your contribution to the universe. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, well, listen, have a great week. I love you dearly. Barbara, Rita, Jacob. Um, this is like my Mr. Rogers neighborhood I do every Sunday night. Maybe, maybe next week I'll announce that I'm doing it. We'll see how high we can get that number to be. Not that it's all about Frankie Trotsky. What is up? What is up? Frank, you know what I wish I was on? AM radio. You ever listen to an AM radio show? Late at night? The sound of interference coming through the waves? Yeah. But you can't sleep and you didn't have a television when you were growing up? And the people on the AM radio would talk just like that. We're going to go to the phones. And the spaces in between their talking, the spaces would put you to sleep. That's why I loved AM radio. And I'm not saying it was FM. I'm saying it'd be a lot of talking and then there'd be a break. And the break is what would put you to sleep. Well, the break and the static. Let's go to the phones. You're like, who's calling during all this? Oh, AM radio would be great. That's how you want to go to sleep. What about a podcast for Sunday night? What about a podcast that you're supposed to fall asleep to? People say, John, I fell asleep. It was so bad. And I go, thank you. AM radio is about the space between the words. We got to go to the phones. All right, well, Frankie, send my love to Barbara as well. I'll sing you any song you want, go. First, first song, first song that I see, I will sing. Come on, let's cut, hit it, hit it. First song I see, I will sing, say it. Say it, say it. I'm the boy and you're on the phone. Lighting up inside your drawer at home, all alone. Pushing 40 in the friend zone. We talk and then you walk away every day. Oh, you don't think twice about me. And maybe you're right to doubt me, but. But if you give me just one night, you're gonna see me in a new light. If you give me just one night, to meet you underneath the moonlight. Oh, I wanna take two, I wanna break through, I wanna know the real thing about you. So I can see you in a new light. And I'm on pitch, and it's not computers, it's not auto-tune, I know how to do it. Bam! That seems like a setup. Yeah, it is true. You know what, Rita? Rita, what this was for you and I is a little bit like the last scene in Full House, where the both of us are sitting on a bed, with the bunny wallpaper, and you just made me realize not to hunger so much for someone else's truth, because New Light kind of is truthful. I love you with all my heart, I love everyone else watching with all my heart. I love Frankie Trotsky with my left sock, and I will talk to you later. Have a great week. Don't let the bastards get you down. And you know how we sign off every week. John Mayer, CBS News, 